Hey, what's up guys? This is Grant, the founder of CartFab.com, and today we are taking the heart out of Midas. For those of you that don't know, uh, I have a little Manco Baja 200 go-kart that I took an old 5 horsepower Briggs & Stratton engine out of and ended up putting in a 13 horsepower engine, which created an awesome go-kart, super fast, awesome acceleration, did a lot of modifications, and it did wheelies, it was crazy, it was too much power. Basically, what ended up happening was it wrecked. So the the dingo is dead for the day. Ferris, you feel alright? Yeah, just a little back pain. She came up on one tire. She, she was hooning it. <laughs> you know, I, I first first I told him I was like, you know what? Don't be afraid to pop a wheelie because it'll hit. It scrapes right down here. It's got a little flat spot on there, so so it'll, you can pop it the wheelie without it flipping. But uh, popped it and just kept riding. Just kept riding, and then boom. So it, wheel. it bent the roll cage. I think you can kind of see the the hankerman on it, and then the uh, the gas tank got dented in. Yeah. Lot bar dead. Now uh, I don't know if one of these things looks normal, and one of these things just a l looks a little different. I don't know if you can tell which one's bent. <laughs> <laughs> Pre-cambered. Pre-cambered. <laughs> it's it's cambered. Go part for sale. All right. Yeah, we're just glad, of course, he's all right because yeah. that, that was scary. Yeah, it protected what's important, the engine, right? Yeah. <laughs> Not so much Ferris, <laughs> right? So, this is what happens when you put a 13 horsepower engine in a five horsepower go kart. Yeah. Right. Sadder thing, sadder things. I never got to ride it on the dirt track. You know, you still can. It <laughs> still runs. See what? Let's see. <laughs> Will she run? We tweaked the frame a little bit and I'm going to fix it and put a smaller engine on it. But what I wanted to do was to take that engine off and we're actually going to end up putting it on this guy right here. This is a bigger go-kart. Uh, it's a Fox Conquest. It's made by Manco, uh, a little two-seater go-kart, has a roll cage. So if it does roll, you know, we don't we won't end up jacking up the gas tank. Bought a new gas tank for it as well because this one got messed up. And, you know, uh, it's just this engine is a little more appropriate for a go-kart this size. Plus, you can bring a friend along to keep it from popping willies. Yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, I got these parts from Go, go Power Sports. I got 18-inch tires. These ones are 22 inch, they're way too big. Uh, it almost caused it to flip before, so I'm gonna go back to the original 18 inchers on that. The front end is a little jacked up with the tie rods. If you can see here, the tie rods <laughs> are a little messed up, okay? And the spindle brackets as well. So we're gonna put new spindles on from Go Power Sports, possibly uh, put in some new tie rods, replace these uh, Springer uh, springs, so we can have a little bit of front suspension. Right now I'm painting this part right here. I just welded on some brackets for this and uh, we're gonna put this light bar on it. So when we're all finished, this should end up being a pretty sweet go-kart that you can ride with two people and it should go just as fast and be just as fun. So let's go check it out. So like I said before, I am painting the frame here. The reason why I'm painting it only in this one spot is because this is the only spot where I removed paint to weld on those tabs. And these are the springs for the Springer front suspension. And all these other parts are found in the description. I've got a link in the description for that. So tie rods, tie rod ends, spindles, spindle brackets, brakes, mechanical brakes, all that stuff is in the description. So if you want to go check it out, if you're curious, you can go check it out over there. So what I'm doing here is removing all the old parts and putting the new ones in. It's a little tricky to put the new springs in since you have to compress it to get it in, but I was able right. to get it in just fine. 
This is the new spring on the left. It's longer and it just allows the go-kart to ride where it's supposed to be and only do its job when you actually hit a bump. So what I'm doing here next is removing the steering mechanisms, the tie rods, tie rod ends, all that good stuff was all replaced and adjusted. So when you look at it, the spindles will actually be straight with the frame. And then I'm installing the old spacers here and a brand new rim and tire assembly for the go-kart. This washer here is extremely important. It acts as a spacer between the bearing seal and the retaining nut for your spindle bracket. And this nut only needs to be hand tightened, otherwise it could seize the bearing, causing it to fail or fall off, which would be really, really bad. This is the old 22 inch tire and we're gonna to attempt to replace it with an 18 incher. So I got the tire off and what looks like throw up over here, tire slime, disgusting. Whoever puts tire slime in their tires instead of patching it or fixing it the right way should be shot. This is why you don't use slime. Rusting out the rims. Now I've got to take all this rust off and repaint it right there just so it won't rust through. Now that the paint is dried, we are installing this light bar. This go-kart originally had a six horsepower engine on it. So we're installing a big block on there and it has a custom motor mount. So I actually need to put that plate right there on the go-kart frame and cut this thing off just to get the engine to fit because it's a lot bigger than the old one. So this is what I used, a straight edge to line up the motor mount holes for my custom motor mount that I already had fabricated for another spot. And I'm installing this extension. Uh, the extension is actually an old Manco motor mount for a 30 series torque converter. So I just chopped that off just to have the motor mount side of it and I'm making sure it's all perfectly straight before I do the final welds on it to make sure it's super strong and it all lines up just right. So this is the initial mock-up of the motor mount and we want the motor to slide rearward and forward with this custom motor mount, like I said, that I already had prefabricated. And now I need to worry about the jack shaft. We are putting in a jack shaft sprocket, jack shaft, and the 40 series driven unit as well as some bearings. Now that the jack shaft assembly is installed, I have 420 chain on there on the go-kart axle and sprocket. Moving on to the rims, I painted them, they're all dry now, and I just installed the tires. Now these are the right diameter of rims, but the width is way too wide. So I got some new rims from Go Power Sports that has the four inch by four inch bolt pattern, which is the correct bolt pattern to mount onto my go-kart hub and my go-kart axle. So these rims, like I said, are different even though they have the same diameter. And I'm gonna show you here in a second a comparison side by side. That's the old on the left for 22 inch tires and the, the new one on the right. So these are 18 inch tires. You can also mount 22 inch tires on these same rims. They just look a little bit more like a balloon which some people like to have. After a quick impact onto the go-kart axle, we are installed. We are almost finished with this build. Final step here is to install a new gas tank. If you remember, the old one got squished and this is the gas tank installed. So we're ready to run. I took all this stuff here on a family vacation to Utah and we're just gonna go test it out and see how it goes.
Hey, thanks guys for watching this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. It helps me out a ton. Also, let me know what you think of the go-kart. Right now I'm thinking this go-kart is really small for the amount of engine that is currently on it. So, thinking about doing something a little more ridiculous, take that engine off of it, modify it a bit more, put on 1.3 roller rockers, put in a 275 cam, right now it has a stock cam, put in dual valve springs, and put in a flat slab carb, and weld up a custom stainless exhaust for it. Stick it on a mini bike, right? <laughs> Uh, so that's kind of what I'm thinking, and then I'm going to actually sell this go-kart because I think it is, quite honestly, too small. It would be great for two little kids, an adult and a small child, um, but my kids are getting a little bit bigger, and um, I actually have two other larger go-karts that have been collecting dust and rust, and I've got some V-twin engines I'm going to be putting on them. So I'm thinking about clearing up some space and getting rid of this. The engine that I want to put on it, is electric start. It's a small engine. It's a, I think a six horsepower engine made by Subaru electric start and it has a charger coil on it so you can electric start it, flip the lights on and off, it has a universal brake switch on it so when you step on the brakes it'll light up the little brake lights in the back so I think that all in all is the right size engine for such a small go-kart. Let me know though. Let me know what you would do with this. I'm looking at colors right now. I'm thinking I'll paint the go-kart black and red, and then sell it. So thanks guys for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. We have a lot of go-kart and mini bike build stuff coming down the line, as well as a lot of performance modifications and testing how effective each modification is. So if you wanna check out some of that stuff, please subscribe and we'll catch you in the next one.